Before looking at the Apex recipes, let's quickly brush up on some Apex classes, interfaces and annotations. Use the test visible annotation to allow test methods to access private or protected members of another class outside the test class. Database save result is the result of the insert or update DML operation returned by a database method. Create two accounts, one of which is missing required field. Iterate through each returned result. If operation was successful, get the ID of the record that was processed. If operation failed, get all errors. To see logs in VS Code, first in Salesforce org, go to Setup, Debug Logs and create user trace flag for current user. Then use Get Apex Debug Logs in VS Code from Command Palette. In VS Code, you can see logs in SFDX slash Tools slash Debug Logs. Another way. In VS Code, right under the Force Up folder, you can see Scripts folder with two folders, Apex and Sokol. Open hello.apex file in Apex folder and write the code you want to run. Then use anonymous code to run it from command palette. See result in output tab, not in terminal tab. You can call any class from scripts. By the way, LWC recipes and Apex recipes from GitHub repository do not have scripts folder, but all new projects created by VS Code have it. We can intentionally invalidate a list of S objects. This is useful for intentionally causing DML errors during testing. Test factory code lives in shared code folder, test factory class. Factory basically has method that object agnostic, just a S object, and you can send new account as a parameter, for example. The test factory class is a special type of class. It is a public class that is annotated with isTest and can be accessed only from the running test. Test visibility classes contain methods that can be called by test method to perform useful tasks such as setting up test date. Test utility classes are excluded from a or code size limit. The test is running test method is used to identify if the piece of code being executed is invoked from a test class execution or from a trigger by job, etc. Return true if the code being executed is invoked from a test class, otherwise returns a false. This method usually comes in handy when you intend to conditionally restrict execution of certain Apex code block based on whether they are being invoked from a test class or not. A practical example would be that performing web service callout at Apex are not supported within test code. Hence, you could use the test is running test to conditionally identify and root the execution of a code block that calls the test mock framework to simulate a mock callout response. Comparable interface adds certain support for lists that contain not primitive types. In sortable account class with comparable interface, we call static void sort method with the list of accounts as a parameter. Then we convert list of accounts type into list sortable account type and sort accounts using sortable account dot compare to method. For additional type safety, we check if other object is a sortable account, if not, throw a sort exception. Compare two method, compare pairs of accounts in a list. I added two debug statements to see how it works in logs. Execute. Open logs. Debug only. You can see pairs of accounts now.
basically it is the same as sort method in JavaScript but with typecasting. We have array with animals and sorted. Take a look. String class escape single quotes method returns a string with the escape character backslash added before any single quotation mark in the string. This method is useful when created a dynamic SQL statement to help prevent SQL injection. Entity definition provides row based access to metadata about standard and custom objects. It contains all possible fields that objects have. This code is for determining if a standard field's value on a S object is automatically calculated by the platform. S object class get S objects field name plural with S at the end returns the value for the specified field. This method is primarily used with dynamic DML to access values for associated objects such as child relationships. Also this class has get object field name and get object field methods. Don't get confused. One of the little known feature of SQL for loops is that you can iterate not only over each record returned by the query, but also over each chunk of record. Specifying the iteration variable as a list will return 200 record chunks from the query rather than individual records. This is a reminder how like operator works. And this code demonstrates how to write a query that pulls information from two parent objects through a junction object. Files home is a central location of your files in Salesforce. See all files that you have stored privately, view files that are shared with you, and share files with others. File homes live in Salesforce app files tab. Content version represents a specific version of a document in Salesforce CRM content or Salesforce files. Content document link represents the link between a Salesforce CRM content document, Salesforce file or content node and where it is shared. Content document ID is an ID of the document or image or audio. Linked entity ID is an ID of a linked object, refers to account, accreditation, activation target, etc. Initialize a map without using put method with arrows. For string use round brackets, for integer curly brackets. As object access decision class contains the result of a call to the security strip and accessible method from security class and method to retrieve those results. Strip and accessible method creates a list of its objects from the source records, which are stripped of fields that fail to fill level security check for the current user. Encoding util class. Use the methods in the encoding util class to encode and decode URL strings and convert strings to the hexadecimal format. Invocable method annotation. Use the invocable method annotation to identify a method that can be run as invocable actions. If a flow invokes Apex, the running user must have the corresponding Apex class security set in their user profile or permission set. Invocable methods are called with REST API and used to invoke a single Apex method. Invocable methods have dynamic input and output values and support describe calls. The following code sample shows an invocable method with primitive data types. Cache Builder interface is an interface that safely retrieving and removing values from a session or cache. Use this interface to generate a value that you want to store in the cache. The interface checks for cache misses, which means you no longer need to check the null cache values yourself. This example creates a class called user info cache that implement the cache builder interface. The class caches the results of a SQL query run against the user object. Then the code gets a cached user records based on the user ID. If the value exists in the org cache, it is returned. If the value doesn't exist, the do load string variable method is re-executed and the new value is cached and returned. 
liquidity enum specifies a liquidity value used by the method in the system request class. The following are the values of the system liquidity enum. Request class contains methods to obtain the request ID and liquidity value of the current Salesforce request. Use the request class to detect the current Apex context at runtime. The methods in the request class obtain a unique request ID and the liquidity value that represent the current Apex execution type. Apex menu items represents the organization default settings for the items in the app menu or app launcher. Use this read-only object to view an entry in the Lightning Platform app menu or the app launcher. You can create a so-called query to retrieve all items, even items that user doesn't see from the user interface. Pattern class represents a compiled representation of regular expressions. The following are methods for patterns. Matchers use patterns to perform match operations on a character string and has a lot of methods. In Apex, pattern and matchers, as well as regular expressions, are based on their counterpart in Java. Take a look. Type class contains methods for getting the Apex type that correspond to the Apex class and for instantiated new types. You can use class methods to retrieve the type of public and global classes and not private classes, even if the context user has access. Also use the new instance method if you want to instantiate a type that implements an interface and call it methods while letting someone else, such as subscriber of your package, provide the methods implementation. Use the forName method to retrieve the type of the Apex class, which can be built in or user-defined class. Note, a call to type forName can cause the class to be compiled. That's it.